the Center for Entrepreneurship is an expert at the networking and kind of how to make it work, how to get the most of it. I don't know, you know, you get emails every day about a networking that you're there somewhere and, and then you can go and then nothing ever happens because you don't follow up or do it um, effectively. So that's the point of this part. And then at 4.30, uh, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to get started practicing what we learn. Thanks, John. Thanks for being here. So first things first, I have to take a picture of everybody just to prove to people that I do something on a daily basis. <laughs> Thank you for helping out my conspiracy. I appreciate it. So uh, thanks for showing up today. Uh, it's good to see everybody. We have a really interesting topic. So how many of you heard you should be out there networking, meeting people? Probably all of you, right? So the rest of you are like, I'm not going to do it yet. I'm not going to do it yet. I'm not going to do it yet. I'm like my class I've got right now. I'm just switching out. But. So I actually did this, uh, this workshop with my students a couple of weeks ago. And I asked them, at the end of it, you know, what would you do to make this better? And uh, every class has a different culture of personality. And this in particular group, uh, they were like, no interaction with they won't talk to you. They won't answer questions. Uh, I don't think half the students really spoke that much English. But so anyway, I asked the question out of the crowd, and I got nothing. <laughs> and finally, after about a minute of an easy silence, this one guy that sits in the front row who always answered a question like, "You should have cats." The three <laughs> and so I said, "I want cats. I don't get that. You know, why do I want to have cats in this thing?" But so. And then everybody, all these other students start backing up, like, yeah, that would make it better. I would definitely pay attention to it if we had cats in there. So, <laughs> so uh, I didn't really buy into it, but then I was going to think, maybe there's something to cats. So, as a result, uh, well, I cast the three. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> here's where we're going to learn today. We are going to learn uh, social network theory. You're like, oh, I like this guy for a second. You know, he's, he's doing cats. It seems like fun. But professor got to talk about theory during this. Uh, this is a really good intro into the social dynamics of what's going on. With it. Understanding from a theoretical perspective, theory, yeah, whatever. If you can apply theory, that's very powerful. And so we'll be learning in the second two portions uh, how to network efficiently and how to network among strangers. Uh, we'll be applying social network to help them, or social network theory to help us out in our networking profession. Everybody else excited? I'm <laughs> excited. Okay. Right. okay, so let's go to the few definitions here so we're all on the same page. A social network is a collection of contacts. Um, another way of thinking it in, in the social network speak is they call ties. So everybody you know, that is a tie. We can map out all those relationships, and that creates your social network. So typically, when we look at a social network, we look at from your perspective or what's called an ego network. And you're in the middle there, and it's how you interrelate to all these other people in your network. Now, the other term you hear thrown around a lot today is social capital. Social capital is the total of resources that you can access through your social network. So your social network is the collection of ties, that matrix of relationships, and the capital, your social capital, is what resources you can access. All right, and one final definition here. Uh, in the social networking world, we like to say there's two types of relationships. There's what we call strong ties, and there's what we call weak ties. So the strong tie is really your friends and close family, or, uh, family and close friends. These are the people you really have a endearing bond with. You're always interacting with them. You're always talking with them. Um, these are your people who are really close to in your life. The weak ties are just better bands. Coworkers, acquaintances, somebody you met 10 years ago went to college with, you keep in touch with there now and then, whole army buddies, the whole crowd there. Okay, those are your weak tie relationships. Uh, and we'll talk a lot about a little, little bit later about the the importance between the two. So we get four primary benefits from social capital. First one is access to resources. So if you think about, hey, I, I, I need a thousand bucks to fix my car, I need to borrow a hundred dollars, there's guys gonna break my leg, 
maybe you can get that for your social relationships. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, can you lend me some money? I'll pay you back. So that that's a monetary resource you can access through your social network. Uh, the next one, access to information. So all these people in your network are able to provide you with information. Right, so that's the four, or the second benefit we get uh, from social capital. Uh, next is the enhanced reputation. So uh, you're often, we, we get, what's the phrase, you're often known by the company you keep. Right? So whoever you keep in your relationships with, the people you identify with. Uh, my ex-wife used to work for John McCain at a high level, and so people are like, you know, John McCain, wow, well, that's, you know, and so they kind of looked at me in a different light, just to know it, right? So that enhanced reputation from being two nodes away from uh, Senator McCain. And finally, social support. So the people in our network are also the ones that tell us it's going to be okay, they go out and have a beer with us after a bad day, all right? They really lean on the, the people we can provide for uh, psychological support. And what's kind of interesting about this is there's a, a lot of research that's coming out of a team from the University of Michigan talking about the health benefits of your social network. So the more what they call positive ties, the positive relationships you have in your life, uh, typically the lower your blood pressure, the lower your cholesterol, and the lower your stress levels. Right. So we've got four basic benefits of social capital, uh, access to resources, access to information, and then uh, enhanced reputation, don't get it. Enhanced reputation uh, and social support. These last two, uh, the enhanced reputation and social support, lead to what I call the first rule of networking, uh, which is always a boy asshole. Yes. <laughs> I, love, I, I got this picture, I just laugh at her. <laughs> so the more assholes we have, Dr. Bob Sutton at Stanford's uh, management department actually uh, published a book on this two years ago uh, talking about uh, if you've got people that are just a pain to deal with, it's actually, so all those positive benefits I talked about from social support, you actually have negative health benefits. The more people that are jerks or assholes or anyone call them your network, the higher blood pressure, the higher your stress level, uh, the higher cholesterol. So there's some negative health benefits to it, or negative health effects. The other thing, too, is you're known by the company you keep, right? So if there's somebody or people in your network that a lot of people don't like, they're going to associate with that person. Or they're just going to not interact with you as much because you associate with those people. All right, so they are, these types of people could be cancers to your social network and really be detrimental to your social capital. So that's the first rule there, is to benefit, you know, to maintain that social capital, just keep jerks uh, at Harvard's point. Alright, so how do we maximize our social capital? It seems like something we want to do, right? Health benefits, monetary benefits, these all seem pretty good. You want this, right? Yes. 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 This is good. Absolutely. Uh, again, people. How may we maximize our uh, social capital? First some things we can do. meet people. We can meet people, all right? So the first strategy, we can increase our network size. The bigger our network, the more social capital we have, right? That's the sum of resources of our network. What are some other things we can do? Um, okay, increase the people are value. So that's one strategy. I, I'm going to go to the country club and I'm going to hang out with people who have lots more resources, right? The only problem with that is it's usually a fifty thousand dollar entry fee at a really good club for a couple hundred thousand, sometimes a million dollars to enter, and you got to have a few people to bring you in and recommend you to do that. So uh, people that have a lot of resources are very good about protecting them and not letting people get into them. So that that it's. That's theoretically possible, but in practice, it's difficult to do. Yes. Business association. So, like, you have something in common, in common interest with them. Yes. So we can, you know, it's a tactic for increasing our network size, right? We can go out, join these associations, meet more people. Like communication. Sorry. Communication. Okay. All right. So, you know, people you meet, fostering, continuing to grow your network size. I have different skill sets. 
All right, so maybe add different skill sets. The next big thing we do here is network diversity. So the more diverse our network, the more just likely we are to get uh, different sets of resources, but in particular, uh, the more likely we are to get really good information. So if our network is very homogeneous, everybody on there looks the same, you got, you know, I think of my dad, he's retired, but he, you know, not only did him and his buddies watch Fox News, they watch the same shows on Fox News, and they look at the same websites, and so they, they, kind of, they all know the same thing. There's no unique information on their social network. They're all getting the same. Whereas the more diverse your network, the more different, you know, the more likely you are to get unique pieces of information to maximize that information access. All right, and so the third way to maximize your social capital is a little counterintuitive to people. It's where you are in your network, your position in the greater social network, if you will. So this sucker up here is my social network according to LinkedIn. There's this really cool tool called LinkedIn Maps. I don't know how to find out LinkedIn, but if you Google it, it'll draw your social network for you. So this is what a social network looks like. And you got my name there in the middle of this whole mess, all right? So when we draw an ego network, you're always right in the middle, and then how your contacts are interrelated around me. So the people that are represented by dots around me, uh, the reason they're closer to me is because there's a lot of interconnections. So they're a good fit. You, know, you can go to Facebook and sort your friends by the number of connections. And you're gonna have, let's say you got 400 friends, you're going to have friends on there, and you've got 60, 80 people in common. Right? Those are the ones that are going to show up closest to you in your social network. How many connections does this place have? I don't know. 500. I have no idea. Yeah. It shows you how often I look at my life in this right? So, correspondingly, the folks that are out here, only out there by themselves, those are people that. You know, I may know them, but we don't have a lot of interconnections with each other. Okay. So the less interconnections you have with people, typically the further they're represented out in the network. Alright. Uh, so I pulled this up this morning, I was really fascinated by it. So I, I think it's a great way. Uh, also, there you see different colors up there. Those different colors represent what we call clusters within the social. So these are different groups of uh, people uh, over time. All right, so how many of you use social media? Social media. How many of you are on Facebook? OK, how about LinkedIn? All right, Twitter. How many of you were five years ago on Facebook? OK, a couple of you. All right, maybe three years ago when we got on uh, Facebook. That makes sense, three. Two years, one year. Okay. So what I thought was kind of interesting about looking at this was that uh, over time, a lot of these clusters are actually different groups of students I've had over time. And what I thought was kind of neat about it was if we went back three or four years ago, you know, we didn't really friend people unless we really knew them. And so that group of students, there, there's not a lot of them on there. And that's this more distant green cluster up here. So, okay, Trish, that's, that's more your group up there. Oh, I'm a little group. Yeah, little group. Which is happy last year. Love for you, Well, I'd say this is not a, uh, and there's a lot of overlap between the blue and the green up there. It's really close to the, to the blue and the green. Okay. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Suit the size, so. Okay. But then the blue group is more uh, students that I had within probably a one to two year window ago. And they're just much more comfortable with friending people on social media. And so I got a lot more LinkedIn connections from that group. And they're all interconnected as well. So we've got this big blue cluster that's also closer to the center of the network. And then down here, we've got this turquoise group, which is my newer student. So some of them have sent me LinkedIn requests, some of them haven't yet. Alright, so that's a new cluster that's forming, if you will. 
So it's a nice evolution of kind of students over time. We looked at uh, the rest of this crowd up here. There's this pink, uh, this cluster way out here. Uh, I did Leadership Tampa back in 2008. Okay, that's Leadership Tampa. This pink cluster up here is people in Leadership Tampa and people who work at USF that know each other. So we can see that the interconnection between people that are faculty and staff at USF and the people in that Leadership Tampa class, we can see how that cluster, they're interrelated and they're closer to the center of that um, This group down here is what I call my Tampa and Bucky Bucks. All right, they're the high rollers, the shakers, the Tampa, everybody knows them. Um, and then what's kind of very interesting to me about all this is this very sparse group down here is actually probably my closest friends. So on my Facebook, if you did a social network analysis on my Facebook, uh, I'm sure those people will be all dense right in the center, but professionally they don't necessarily all interact with each other and they don't know my professional contacts. So they appear to be very distant and sparse and related to each other. Okay. But this is what a social network looks like. How those interrelationships are kind of illustrated. What's the system called? Uh, it's called LinkedIn Maps. It's Google app, and it'll ask you to sign up with your LinkedIn account, and it'll draw it up for you. Pretty neat stuff. Is that good to separate Facebook from personal and LinkedIn from business? That's up to you. That's what I prefer, right? but a lot of business people are trying to come on my Facebook. Right. I call it the wall strategy. You know, people want to have the LinkedIn up front, the party in the back, you know, <laughs> Facebook. But I, I gave up, I just started letting everybody in there. So I mean Facebook. Yeah. Right. You gotta read my crap and I can walk you in. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this is what my LinkedIn network looks like. Alright, it's not a real it's not hugely accurate for my what my real social network looks like, but it's illustrative. Or talking about. So this is really interesting. Um, really your position in the greater social network of society, not just yours, but how society's social network works, that really determines your performance in life. And I'll now explain why that is.